I'm Professor Philip Steer, Emeritus Professor of Obstetrics at Imperial College London, based at the Chelsea Westminster Hospital. Group B Streptococcus is a bacterium which is widely distributed in nature. It's found in the gastrointestinal tract of many animals, fish, cattle, and humans. And about a third of humans actually carry it normally in their bowel. Now, of course, in women, the anatomical arrangement is such that uh, the bacterium can get out of the bowel into the vagina relatively easily. So about one in five women to perhaps one in four will be carrying the bacterium in their vagina. If the baby picks up the group B streptococcus as it's passing through the birth canal, then a proportion of these babies, about one in 400, will become very ill with septicemia, pneumonia, and even worse, meningitis. Now, a lot of these babies will recover with antibiotic treatment and intensive care, but unfortunately, about 10% of them will die. So the next question we have to ask ourselves is, is there anything we can do to prevent this? And the first step in prevention is knowing which babies are at risk, and that means knowing who are the mothers who are carrying the group B streptococcus. And in order to find that out, we have to do a test on the mothers to see if they're carriers. Now, the test that we do to see if they're carriers comes in two types of test. First, we can do antenatally. That's before the baby's born, usually between 35 and 37 weeks. This involves taking a swab from the lower vagina, and it's the lower vagina, not the higher vagina, which is often done by mistake. Lower vagina because it's nearer the anus, and also an anal swab just inside the anal orifice. So you put those two swabs in transport medium, and then it has to go into special culture medium that will pick out the group B streptococcus. The point of why we need the special culture medium is that if you just put it in the standard medium, which is used to culture for vaginal infections, the group B strep can be swamped by lots of other bacteria that are there, such as E. coli and Klebsiella and so on, and then it goes undetected. So what you need to do is to put it into a special culture medium with antibiotics will which will kill off the other bugs, and also with extra nutrients which will help the group B streptococcus to grow. So that makes it much more likely that you will pick up the group B streptococcus if it's there. In fact, uh, about nine out of 10 cases of carriers will be detected in this way if you use the enriched culture medium, the special test for the group B strep. If you use a standard test, it might be as low as 50 or 60%. So you're gonna miss a lot of carriers if you just use the ordinary uh, test, which is commonly used in NHS practice. Instead of testing every woman antenatally, it is possible to do the swab tests at the beginning of labor, when the women first start. And this is then taken away and put through a special process called polymerase chain reaction testing. Now the problem with this is it requires laboratory facilities. It's got to be available 24-7, 365 days a year. And if the woman's having her baby at home, or if she's having birth in a midwife-led unit, or she's encouraged to stay at home until she's well advanced in labor, then the test is either not gonna be done or it will be done already in advanced labor. And this is really important because in order to prevent the GBS damaging the baby, we need to get, give the mother antibiotics for at least two hours before she delivers and preferably for four hours before she delivers. It's giving this what we call intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis that is protective. And this will prevent about nine out of 10 babies of mothers who are carriers who would have got the disease from getting it. So when we're doing a screening test, it's really important that we take the right swabs from the right place and put it in the right culture medium. And that way we'll have the best guarantee of knowing which mothers are carriers and which mothers are not. And it's just as important in some respects to know who's not a carrier as who is. At the present time, the National Screening Committee and the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists don't recommend routine antenatal screening for group B streptococcus. But what they do recommend is that intravenous antibiotic prophylaxis with penicillin should be offered and given to women who have specific risk factors. And those risk factors include, for example, being feverish during labor. Now, if you look at all the group of women with risk factors, it's about one in five of all women in labor. So they will be given penicillin. But most of those women, about two thirds of them, will not actually be carriers of group B streptococcus at all. So they're getting the antibiotic when it's not actually necessary. So what we'd like to do is take a similar amount of antibiotics 
and target it at the women whose babies are genuinely at risk because they are known to be carriers and not give it to the women with other risk factors who are known not to be carrying group B streptococcus. At the current time, there's an entirely legitimate concern about the overuse of antibiotics. This can lead to resistant organisms and it can also upset the normal balance of bacteria and bugs in our bowel, which can of itself lead to disease and illness in the long term. However, in the case of group B strep, in the great majority of cases, we're talking about just giving penicillin, which is a narrow spectrum, for relatively short periods during labor. And there's no evidence that penicillin, which has been around for more than 60 years, is likely to cause increased resistance or indeed has any other serious long-term effects on either the mother or the baby. So we mustn't confuse giving this relatively short dose of a narrow spectrum antibiotic with the prolonged use of broad spectrum antibiotics, which is not appropriate. Although screening for group B strep early onset disease has been controversial in the UK, this is not true of most other developed countries. And the country that's taken the lead in this has been the United States of America. So the American uh, Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists got together and uh, recommended ways of screening women which were finally introduced nationally in 2002. And as a result of these initiatives, their rate has dropped dramatically by 75, almost 80 percent. And there's no reason to suppose that a similar approach to that used in the USA would not work just as well in the United Kingdom, as it has worked effectively in many other countries, such as Italy, Spain, Germany, Belgium, and so on including other countries that recently have introduced screening, such as, for example, Hong Kong. So in all these other countries, it's regarded as absolutely standard normal practice to screen for group B strep disease. It is not controversial. It's really only in the UK that we're out of step. If a mother is a carrier of group B streptococcus, there's a 1 in 300 to 400 chance that her baby will develop the early onset group B strep disease. But in the UK as a whole, this amounts to about 400 babies a year that are diagnosed, definitely confirmed by culture to have early onset group B strep disease, and probably about another 400 that probably have it, but they didn't actually get the culture to grow. So we're talking about 800, possibly even as many as 1,000 babies in their families that are going through the trauma of the baby going into intensive care treatment. A proportion of these babies will die. Um, some, a few, will have long-term um, disability. And so it, this is really numerically a very significant and substantial problem. Now, neonatal intensive care is fantastic, but it's also very expensive. And this is the basis for why screening is actually cost-effectiveness. Overall, it saves the country money. And the reason for this is that the test itself on the NHS, we estimate would cost about £11, is relatively cheap, whereas the illness that it prevents is very expensive to deal with, to treat and to manage. There have been a number of very important bodies in the UK over the last 10 years. Um, the Health Economics Unit in York, the one in Birmingham, studies funded by the Health Technology Assessment Programme, two big publications, one in the British Medical Journal, one in the British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynaecology, that show very clearly, both these big studies, that actually screening and preventing group B strep is cheaper in the long run than having to deal with the damaged babies that result from infection.